Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Balcavage and I'm back for another edition of Methylation Monday. Today I want to talk about one of the questions I get pretty frequently from docs who call me for help and that is I'm new at functional medicine or I'm new at methylation and I want to know what tests are the best tests to run. What should I run first? A methylation panel? Should I run a 23andMe? What should I run first? Well, uh, that it really all depends on a couple factors of what tests should be run first. And, it, and a couple of those factors are your patient history. Your patient history is going to tell you a ton about what's wrong with your patient and which testing is most appropriate for your patient. Uh, what are your patient symptoms? That's really important. So based on your patient symptoms, that's going to steer you in a specific direction as to what testing should be done. And third, you want to take a look at what was done for them in the past testing-wise and treatment-wise and you don't want to necessarily redo something that was just done. For me though, and it doesn't always matter if the, the patient's, if I'm the first doctor the patient's seen or they've seen multiple doctors already, if they haven't had a recent comprehensive metabolic panel, I'm definitely probably running a comprehensive metabolic panel. That's one of my initial go-to tests for almost every patient. Uh, second go-to test, because it gives you so much information, is an organic acid amino acid panel. I think this is a foundational test in functional medicine. It gives us insight into what's going on from a gut health standpoint. Is there dysbiosis? Is it yeast or bacterial uh, dysbiosis going on in the GI tract? Is there more malabsorption issues going on in the GI tract? Uh, we can get information regarding carbohydrate and fat metabolism and how well Krebs cycle is functioning we can get a look at neurotransmitter physiology and micronutrient status detoxification processes urea cycle function we can just get so much information from an amino acid or uh, your amino acid organic acid panel that I think that this should be a foundational test if your patient hasn't had one done um, I, rec I recommend that you get one done the third go-to test for me uh, would be the GI MAP test. Uh, now this test is fairly new. It's using DNA uh, technology to look for what pathogens and, and bacteria and other things are going on in the GI tract and elsewhere. Um, and essentially it's a, it's a stool test. But if my, especially if my, my organic acid amino acid panel comes back that there's dysbiosis in the GI tract and my patient has uh, GI symptomatology then I'm pretty much going to run this as one of my go-to tests. And I want to find out what what organisms I have to deal with uh, before I really get into anything along the methylation standpoint. If the gut is not healthy, I don't want to be loading a bunch of nutrients into the system. I don't want to make their dysbiosis worse by feeding a pathogen. I want to make sure I get rid of those pathogens, get calm down that uh, maybe an overgrowth of opportunistic organisms and reestablish a healthy gut flora before I start loading too much uh, methylation support into somebody's system. If those tests have been done re recently or I've done those tests and I still need to do other, other testing, my next three maybe go-to tests would be um, the Dutch test from Precision Analytical, which is an organic, um, which is a, an adrenal testing and hormone t panel. I think this this test is uh, far better than the salivary testing I used to run, uh, and I would re highly recommend that. If you have a patient who's got chronic fatigue, chronic stress, they've got hormonal imbalances, this is, to me, a go-to test. Um, next thing I'm going to be running is probably a methylation panel. Um, and there's two labs, Doctors Data and HDRI, HDRI Labs both run uh, methylation panels. They're slightly different. Um, but both could give you the information, some of the information you're looking for regarding their methylation. Uh, the Dutch test, by the way, will give you some input into their methylation status, as will the organic acid amino acid panel. So if you know how to interpret those things, you can still get an idea from those tests uh, regarding the status of somebody's methylation. The last test would probably be a genetic variant panel, maybe a genetic testing, something like a 23andMe, and then uh, getting a report from one of the report generating sites and then uh, using that as kind of a, a tool to help me understand where their physiology may be broken down. And I'll talk about that in a later video. So I get this question quite a bit. What would be my go-to tests, my top three go-to tests, a comprehensive metabolic panel, 
an organic acid amino acid panel, and probably the GI map would be my top three to, to evaluate somebody. And then my next three go-to tests would be the Dutch panel from Precision Analytics, some type of immune testing, if I need to do any antibody immune testing, leaky gut testing, uh, gluten intolerance testing, food sensitivity testing, that would go to Cyrex Labs. Uh, and then the last testing would probably be the methylation panel, and then finally uh, testing their genetics. So those would be my top go-to tests. But again, if the patient's history dictated uh, some other type of testing, I would do that. If it was neurotransmitter physiology, I would need to take an in-depth look. I may, I may go to a different lab. If I need to do Lyme testing, I'd use a different, uh, obviously a different testing. So it really does depend on what you're looking for. But those would be some of the go-to tests. All right. Hope this helped. Uh, I'll be bringing you another Methylation Monday video next Monday. All right. Take care.